Super microcomputers crashed down 23% just on Friday alone. When we take a look at the broader market, we in fact see it was the worst week for the big tech companies since the COVID crash of 2020. And in fact, it was the worst week overall of the stock market since October 2022. Now, when we take a look, a closer look, in fact, at the semiconductors last week, we had some very, very poor performances across the board, all red, in fact, double digits across big companies. And in today's episode, we are going to focus on super microcomputers. We want to understand why did they crash nearly 25% it is now a fantastic opportunity to buy this semiconductor that has been hammered and whether or not it is massively undervalued. Now, yesterday, we in fact did an episode dedicated to NVIDIA, this massive company down 15% alone. Nonetheless, we can see Wall Street did still consider this to be a strong buy. But also, we are going to look at Taiwan Semiconductors as this does have influence over the companies and semiconductors like super microcomputers. And we're also going to talk about a few things that run through the earnings call from TSMC that does talk about the overall market as well for semiconductors. Now, we are going to do our deep dive analysis. We're going to look at the historical performance of SMCI. We're going to look at the health of this company as well as their top line revenue growth year on year versus their bottom line net income growth. And we'll see whether or not the balance sheet does look strong, cash versus total debt as always. We're also going to take a look at their financial metrics, notably their free cash flow growth, their sales, as well as some other metrics like the ROIC. And we'll look towards both insiders as well as institutions to see if we can note any trends, any buying or selling. And what we also want to do, there's some very key information that you need to understand from their latest results that will help us essentially predict whether or not they will have a very good quarter when they release their earnings over the next week. And as always, not only are we going to run them through the valuation model to get to our own intrinsic value as well as acceptable buy price and take a look at Wall Street's expectations, but we're going to run you through our discounted cash flow model so you understand where the price targets are coming from. We'll look at a low rate, a medium rate and a high growth rate in relation to that free cash flow growth. And we'll use some numbers so you can understand based on your own thinking whether or not this company is severely undervalued and if it's a great time to buy now. So let's start off and understand why this company did drop so sharply, what the issues were. And one of the things we want to start off with was the fact that super microcomputers are one of essentially the vendors that build NVIDIA based servers and sell it to them. And we can see here they broke away from their recent pattern where they would provide preliminary results before actually running through their earnings a week later. So what does this mean and how does this compare to the last quarter? So what we can see here in January when they did report last, they in fact increased both their sales and their earnings guidance 11 days before they announced their Q2 results. Now, what they have essentially done, we were expecting on Friday or this week at least for the company to discuss some of their preliminary results. And the market now believes that because they have not done that similar to how they did it in their fourth quarter, that they may not meet those analyst expectations and their targets. So it has a, got a lot of companies, the stock market scared, not only when we do take a look at super microcomputers, as we said already, the whole market is looking very red and one of the worst weeks, but a majority of the companies. Now, one of the reasons why we saw this on Friday is due to the fact that as we can clearly see here next week a lot of big companies in the tech sector as well as semiconductors are reporting so the market is now spooked that they may not hit those analyst expectations and let's be honest, a lot of these companies do have a lot of high quality growth baked into their valuations already. So any small misses will affect their share prices heavily, as we have already seen on Friday. Now, when we take a look at TSM and their earnings, the reason why it is so important for the semiconductors as general, as we can see, they are the world's largest producers of these advanced processors, and some of their big customers are NVIDIA and Apple. Now, essentially, they had a very good quarter. They beat on both metrics because they essentially say there is a strong demand 
for their AI chips. And as we can see here, they did beat on both a net revenue basis as well as a net income. Now, the only worries that we do have from this company, as we can see here, the largest producer of these advanced processors, is a few things that we did note from their latest earnings call last week. Now, for the company itself, they did say they expect 2024 to be a healthy growth year for the company TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. However, when they do look at the overall market, what they are essentially saying is they expect the overall semiconductor market, excluding memory, to experience a more mild and gradual recovery. And what they have also done is they've lowered their forecast for the overall semiconductor market, excluding memory, to increase by around 10% year over year, while the industry growth is now forecasted to be mid to high teens. So a little bit of a worry now. We will have more information when the earnings are released over the next week to see whether or not this does hold true, but something you do really need to take account of. When we analyze the company itself, it is down 23% just over that last day, a very poor performance. But year to date, we do still see very strong up 151%. Over the last five years, up over 3,000%, and over the last 10 years, similarly, a very, very strong performance. Now, even after the drop, they are still in the mid to upper end of the 52-week range. We do have one strong buy rating from analysts, one buy and one hold, and we now note the forward P has dropped to around 32.51, where before this drop, we did see it in the 50s to the 60s. So let's take a look at the actual numbers of this company. What is the revenue growth? What is the net income growth and the health looking like? What we typically like to see for year on year growth is around a three to 7% level. However, that is more for a stable company. For a growth company, we would see a much larger increase. June 2014, they reported 1.5 billion on their top line. June 2023, 7.1. So we can clearly see they have increased that top line very strongly. In fact, by five times over the last 10 years. And on a growth basis, we can see some sharp increases over the period. So they are increasing their top line very healthy. How does their bottom line net income compare? Well, much, much, much rapider increase. 54, in fact, in June 2014 to around 640 million. So more than 10 times growth over the last 10 years. We do know some inconsistencies where, as we can see, it has decreased over some years. But overall, it has moved in the right direction. And in fact, from June 2021, their bottom line has seen some massive growth. So as we can see, a lot of this large growth is already baked into their share price. So any small deviations from that, as we will see when we look at the valuation process, it will very, very much harm their share price going forwards. How about the health of this company? So total cash versus their total debt. 97 million in June 2014, 726 million from their latest report. So we can also see their cash position over the longer term has increased. They hold around 726 million. Now, for a quick health check, we do compare numerically and directionally to their total debt. We can see even though it has increased by around 10 times, going from 46 million to 401 million, their total cash position is much larger. And if they wanted to, even in one day, they could pay it off. So this increase over the period does not signal any red flag indicators. What we also like to do is have a quick look at a few underlying metrics. So we'll start off with the growth grade. They got the highest grade achievable at an A+. Now, if you do want to grab essentially a subscription to Seeking Alpha, you can click on the pinned comment below to get a 20% discount. And you can run through all companies to get all of these valuation and metrics that we discuss in today's episode. Revenue growth year on year then 39%, much higher than the sector median at 4%. EBITDA growth as well, we can see a lot of outperformance versus the median in these industries and their competitors. And even their forward-looking data, essentially the EBITDA growth forward-looking, 81 versus the industry of six, we can see a very high quality company. And one of the things I always like to look at is their earnings per share on a forward-looking Kager basis. So over the last three to five years, 50% year on year versus the industry, 13.6%. So we can quite clearly see they deserve this A plus rating. It is all about maintaining the growth that they are expecting. As we mentioned earlier, any deviations will harm their share price. In terms of the profitability, they do have quite a mixed rating, a B rating in fact. What I quite like to look at are two ratings. The first one is their gross profit. So we can see they are struggling and this will be covered when we look at their investor presentation. Sector median is much higher at 49%. 
Their bottom line, however, whilst their gross margin does suffer, their bottom line net income is much better at 8 versus 2.6. So mixed rating on the profitability, however, growth does look very, very strong. What I also quite like to do is just see how they have performed versus some of competitors in the market. We have HP, Fujifilm, as well as some very big other companies in the sector. Now, over the last year, total return outperformed, and this is a trend that we will see across the board when we do maximize to the five years and 10 years as well. So one thing it is very important to understand, especially for newer viewers, is that just because a company has performed very strongly in the past, it doesn't mean or is not an indicator that the future performance will be replicated. So do bear that in mind when you do your own essential analysis. Now, one thing we like to look at is insider ownership, pretty high. In fact, one of the highest that we have analyzed on the channel, around 18% insider ownership. Now, we've seen a significant number of insider sales, in fact, eight over the last 12 months, incorporating around $70 million worth. And we can see one of the largest, in fact, the more recent quarter, Q1 of $30 million worth. Now, when we take a look just to see, in fact, it was the director. This was on the 29th of February, sold 5,000 shares for a total of $4 million. We also see the senior vice president, Don C, 14th of February, sell quite a significant amount of 25 million as well. Now, we always like to be transparent, so we will show sales as well as buys. But what we would say is buys is more of a bullish signal. Management realistically buy because they believe the share price will go up. Insider selling, you never know why, personal reasons, financial reasons. But as always, you can factor this in if you prefer into your own investment thesis as well as your margin of safety. Institutional ownership does sit at 84%. We do see around $2.23 billion worth of sales by the institutions over the last 12 months. But we see a little bit more buying, so $3 billion versus 2 over the same period. And in fact, over the last three quarters, we see a lot more buying than selling. You have to go back as to quarter two of 2023 to see these sales essentially outperform the buys. And we can effectively say then over the last 12 months, as well as the more recent quarter, institutions are buying a lot more shares of super micro computers than they are selling. So let's take a look now at the investor presentation. A few slides that I did want to highlight. Now, this was from their previous presentation. We are expecting one over the next week. So it will be interesting to see. Let me know if you do want us to revise our analysis at that point. So let's go for Q2 FY24, quarter on quarter up 73% on the top line. Year on year, we can see up 103%. When we take a look at their gross margin, and this thing we'll touch on on another slide, we can, however, see that it is down quite significantly. In fact, year on year, 330 BPS. Earnings per share, though, some very strong performance. We can see it is up 233 and 216 on a quarter on quarter basis. So we can see this is a company that is growing very rapidly and any slight deviations from what the analysts are expecting, they will get hammered very hard. And as we already saw, the market is getting spooked as they did not release any preliminary results. Now, let's take a look at their revenue again, quarter on quarter over the longer term, they are increasing. In fact, the more recent quarter, they had guided 2.7 billion to 2.9. They significantly outperformed that to 3.7 billion. And we can see 71% of that revenue, their top line does come from the USA. non grap gross margin. Now, this is what I don't like to see. I always want to see an increase in margins. If you've watched this episodes recently, you do know we like the operational efficiency. So increases to the operating margin over time as well as an increase to the top line. And not only have their gross margins been decreasing, but even when we've compared it to others in the essential sector, we also note that it is much lower. So one area we definitely believe they should improve. Now, the reason that they attribute to this is they want to gain as much market share as possible, essentially undercutting their competitors, hence why they are reducing their gross margin. So a few things just to factor in, it isn't really what we like to see. And if you did watch NVIDIA's episode yesterday, you saw they have that deadly combination increasing their top line revenue quarter on quarter, year on year, but also increasing their gross margin. So something to note with super microcomputers that NVIDIA do very, very well. We then move on to their earnings per share. As always, you do want to see increased earnings per share. A little bit inconsistent, but notably in the more recent quarter, whilst they guided 440 to 488, they smashed through that as well, which they do attribute to higher revenue. So again, a lot is riding on their next report that is coming out soon. Now, so what exactly is it that we are looking at? 
What we can see here, they are expecting 3.7 billion to 4.1. Their earnings per share, 520 to 6 on a non gap, 479 to 564. And full year, somewhere in the region of 14.3 to 14.7. So you may look at that and be not sure how they performed, but this is an incredible number if they are able to achieve this. Let's just look at their full year from FY23. As we can see here, 7 billion in June 2023. So what they are now saying is that they expect to double that in FY24. So there are some massive expectations on their shoulders. And if they do beat that, that share price, in my opinion, may go back up to what we had seen previously. Now, before we do take a look at their metrics, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. We get a lot of comments on where we get our information from the resources. We explain that all in this article, all completely free. If you want to read any of our other articles, do click on that pinned comment below and you can sign up straight away and take a read. Let's move on to their metrics. Now, what we want to see is growth on the free cash flow. However, what do we really see? A lot of inconsistency. So something to note with super microcomputers that we didn't see with NVIDIA is the inconsistency. In fact, half of the last 10 years, we do note that negative growth of free cash flow per share. We also want to point out they are expecting that free cash flow to drop. Sales growth, as we mentioned, they are expecting some very, very large numbers. In 2024, they were expecting 100% growth to their top line. And over the course of the last 10 years, we are seeing double digit growth to these numbers. So it will be interesting to see whether or not they are able to sustain that, not just into FY24, but over the longer term as well. And numerically, as we ran through just another format, but they are increasing their top line very rapidly. Two things to note here. Firstly, with the shares outstanding, whilst we do love it when companies do those share buybacks, essentially giving us that excess cash. What we note, they do the opposite. So they dilute your position. You never want to see that as an investor. The only thing we would say, you probably wouldn't care if over the last 10 years, they have increased that share price by over 3000%, but something just to keep an eye on and factor in maybe to other analyses of other companies when you do research them. ROIC, what do we want to see here? 10% or more just to give us faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. They've hit that pretty much every year, bar 2020, that COVID pandemic. Last year, very strong 33%. So this is a company that is returning a lot of their cash at very high rates. So that is very positive and attractive to see as investors as well as those potential investors. As we mentioned now, their margins is something that is a little bit of a worry. Not only is it decreasing year on year as we saw quarter on quarter, but it is also significantly below what those analysts are estimating and below what the essential industry as a whole are achieving so one thing to keep an eye on nice to note though it has increased over the last few years free cash flow margin as we discussed very very inconsistent we do want to see a minimum of five percent here year on year net debt to ebitda the earnings before the interest tax depreciation amortization this signals the balance sheet strength with these being the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt and the head of cash on hand Seven of the last 10 years, zero. More importantly, the more recent year and in the next year expected. It means it wouldn't even take them, as we ran through earlier, one day to pay off all of their debt, net of cash on hand. This is a company with a very, very strong balance sheet. And now let's get into the valuation. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, in today's episode, we have gone for a forward looking growth rate of 20%. In conjunction with that discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and we do get an intrinsic value showing a sign of undervaluation as we can see intrinsic value, market value. But bear in mind, this is on a growth rate of 20% year on year for the next 10 years and beyond. Now, there are people that say that is too high. You've got to be more conservative. So at a 15% margin or in fact, 15% growth rate forward looking, the intrinsic value of SMCI would be $541. So when we take a look at that, we can see here on a 15% growth rate, upside would be negative 24%. On a 20%, it would be 7%. And for those who are screaming that even 20% is too low, growth is going to be there at a 25% level. We get an intrinsic value showing some very nice upside at $1,064. 
Now, there may be people who aren't happy with these rates that we use. As always, if you do click on the pinned comment below, you can grab a copy of this valuation model so you can essentially value companies in your own portfolio and those on your watch list, as well as use the other four model or other three models, in fact, that we use, dividend discount model, the multiples valuation and Graham's. Now, for those that are saying even 15 is too high, just so that you understand how this affects the price, if it was in fact to be a 10% year on year over the next 10 years and beyond, it would be $382 as we can see massive overvaluation. If you're saying, you know, 25% is in fact too low, too conservative still, and we move to 30%, you can see over essentially the next 10 years and beyond with that growth rate, the value of the shares would be in fact double or just slightly higher than the current trading price. Now, in today's episode, we are going to pull forwards the 20% into the next slide to get to our intrinsic value. And essentially, because we only believe in the best model to value SMCI is the DCF, we will use that for today's episode. And that does get to 761 based on the 20% growth rate. Now, in terms of margin of safety, if you're a regular viewer, you know we start off with 10%. We execute if it meets the three criteria wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data. If you believe that for SMCI, it doesn't warrant right now a 10% MOS level until it hits 685. What it does though, it has right now between a 5 to 10% margin of safety based on those estimates and judgments. As we can see, a 5% MOS would be an acceptable buy at $723. What does Wall Street say over the next 12 months? Well, they believe this share price will go back up to the prices we have seen recently, $966. They see upside of 36%. They do believe this to be a very strong company that is one that should be in your portfolio, as we did see earlier. As always, though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is SMCI one that you are looking to add after that massive drop that we saw on Friday? Is it on your watch list? Are you waiting even for the earnings? And let us know if you do want us to cover those earnings as well. As always, if you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.